Lord here. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of Almighty God, let us confess our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. Have mercy on us. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. Have mercy on us. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. Have mercy on us. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the praise. Rescue 
your people from despair, deliver your sons and daughters from fear, and preserve us in the faith of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We continue with the first reading. We're reading from First Kings. By chorus and out of God, Elijah came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I am left, I am I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains, and breaking rocks and pieces the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle, and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arise, you shall anoint Hazael as king over Aram. And you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshah, as king over Israel, and you shall anoint Elisha as Saphat of Abel Maloa, as a prophet in your sight. Whoever escapes from the sword of Hazel, say you shall kill, and whoever escapes from the word of Jehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, God. We continue with Psalm 85, we'll read it responsibly. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for you speak peace to your faithful people and those who turn their hearts to you. Your salvation is very near to those who hear you, that your glory may dwell in the land. Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together. Righteousness and peace has kissed each other.
the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, while he dismissed the crowd. And after he dismissed the crowd, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but by this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. They cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is your command, if Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated as we continue with the service. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Our gospel lesson for this week it picks up right where we left off last week with the feeding of the five thousand. Um, I'm assuming that is what y'all heard last week. Okay, good. Thank you. It picks up with the feeding of the five thousand. So Jesus, he has heard about John the Baptist being beheaded, and needing to grieve and be by himself, he goes to a quiet place, but the crowd follows him anyway, and so he feeds the multitude. But after feeding them, Jesus still needs to grieve. So he puts the disciples in a boat to cross the sea, dismisses the crowd, and he goes out so he can be by himself with his God. And in Matthew, this is actually the first time since the calling of the disciples that they have been separated from him. And so as they are separated from Jesus for the first time, you get this sense that they have separation anxiety. The disciples, they know where they need to go, but yet they can't get there because the wind and the waves are against them. How often are we like the disciples? I know exactly what I need to do to be a follower of Jesus. The greatest commandment is, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. What does the Lord require of you? Love, mercy, do justice, walk humbly with our God. We know these things. But even though we know them, even though the disciples know where they are supposed to go, the wind begins to blow, the waves pick up, and the forces of this world begin to work against them. In the midst of it all, the disciples become stuck in the middle of the sea. They cannot go back to shore, yet they cannot get where they need to go. And so often in our world, we too become stuck like the disciples. And yet even in the stuckness, out in the middle of a lake, Jesus leaves his place with God to go and be with the disciples. Jesus leaves his place with God to enter into this place, to be with us. But as he goes out to be with the disciples, Matthew, he wants us to know that it's during the fourth watch. Our translation of the Bible says early in the morning. And the fourth watch, it was that early morning shift right before dawn. Before you can truly see what is happening and your eyes can play tricks on you. That time of day when it's hard to tell what is real and what is not. It's during this uncertain time that the disciples see Jesus on the water and they cry out, It is a ghost. But when they say ghost, they're not talking about 
out like Casper the Friendly Ghost, or someone dead visiting the earth, but rather ghost as in a vision that lacks substance. You see it there, but there is no body to it, there is no substance, a vision that has no depth and cannot sustain. They had heard Jesus preach. They had heard his teachings. They had even seen him feed the multitude. But is that really enough when we are out here in the real world, surrounded by waves and wind? We know that Jesus is in this place, and we heard the words of forgiveness. But is it really enough for me to live a forgiven life? We will taste the bread and the wine. We will feast on God's love. But is it really enough for us to go out and live in the love of Christ in the world? We you know in the waters of baptism, the new life that is for us, but is it really enough to hold us through an entire lifetime, through all the sickness and the challenges? And in that fear, the disciples cried out, Jesus' response, it is I. And in that response, in the middle of nowhere, in the darkness before the dawn, Jesus answers all of those unasked questions, yes, it is I. And I am enough. <coughs> in response to that, then we have Peter. And Peter's response is only recorded in the Gospel of Matthew. But after Jesus says, it is I, Peter has the oddest request. Lord, if it really is you, then call me out. Command me to come out. If it is you, then I will. It is a challenge. It is this test. And how often in our lives do we challenge God as well? God, if you are really there, then. But even in response to this challenge, this test, Jesus has a simple response. Come. And Peter gets out of the boat. Now I have to be honest. If I were Peter, I think I would have stayed put. <laughs> right? Why would you get out of the boat? Yes, I may be stuck in that boat, but that boat is at least keeping me afloat in the middle of the rain, waves, and the wind, and the storm. Why would you sacrifice the safety of the boat? And yet, while Peter doesn't get everything right, he did at least know enough that faith it is not about living your life in safety, but about living your life in God. And Peter, knowing this, ventures out of the boat with his eyes on Jesus. And then they him. And he notices the waves and the wind, and he becomes frightened, and he sinks. Now this is the part where it is really easy to just focus on Peter's actions and say, okay, Peter took his eyes off of Jesus and he sank. I shouldn't take my eyes off of Jesus and I won't sink. But who are we focusing on that statement? Me. My response. And it's not that you can't have some very good, uplifting sermons when we look at that, but if you look beyond Peter's response, beyond our response, we see Jesus. And we begin to see the power of this story. It is not what we do. It is not our ability to live a life of faith. It is not the fact that we take our eyes off Jesus. We sink. We sin. We miss the mark. Just like Peter. We will say, we cannot always keep our eyes on Jesus. We get stuck living in the darkness of the world. The power of the story it lies not in our response, but in Jesus's. Because we see that even as I am sinking down into the waves, as Peter is sinking down into the waves, Jesus extends his hand immediately. The hand of the man who spilled the waters extends his pierced hand to us. And we see he is not a ghost. He is enough. Even in the midst of 
an all too real world. The good news of today, it's not about us and our ability to walk on water. It is about the love of our God, who reaches down no matter how deep we may sink in order to save us. We see a God whose love was enough for Peter, a God whose love was enough for the disciples, enough to change the power of the water and the course of life. You see, a God whose love is enough for you and for me. In a few minutes, you will leave this place and go back into the wind and the waves of the real world. Windy and out of control as it may be. But as you leave this place, you leave knowing that you do so in the love of God. That that hand of God's love is extended to you and it has a grip on you. And it will not let you go. As you go out into the world, you see that is more than enough. Amen.
We give you thanks, O oh God, for the saints of the whole church from all times and places, and for the saints in our lives and in our community whom you have gathered to yourself. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we gather, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
rise to the blood. Now that we've made, and now may the body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in His grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of the table, in this meal we have feasted on your goodness and have been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth, sustained by these gifts, so that we may share your love with all. Through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. And Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. 